Hi guys, I'm, it's Marty Sakata. How are you? Uh, so just to give a quick rundown. So I started this group. Uh, so I'm a Wharton guy. I worked in banking for many years. So uh, in Goldman Sachs, UBS, JP Morgan. And um, I was working in Switzerland during the long-term capital management crisis. UBS is at the bottom of it. And so uh, Swiss Bank, where I worked, had to take over uh, UBS. And not many people know that. Uh, but that's, that's what happened. It's just like, uh, let me see. So Chase took over, well, Chemical Bank took over Manny, Manny Hanny. Yes. Chemical, Chemical Bank Chase. took over Chase. Right. And then Chase, well, JP Morgan. Chase merged with JP Morgan, but JP Morgan won that battle. JP Morgan bought Bank One. Yeah. yeah. And so, but uh, Jamie Diamond came out of Bank One. Yes. But for the most part, it was kind of a, a battle of peers for many years. They William Harrison stayed on top for a couple of years and then he gave up the reins to. But but that's what happens in banking is that people you keep the they keep the best brand and obviously the Chase brand has been around forever as is JP Morgan. So anyway, so I started a group of Wharton guys investing directly in private equity back then. I also started something called the Wharton Angel Network. I started the Wharton Investor Network, and so the Wharton Investor Network was a network of people doing direct private equity deals. So we had a bunch of fund managers there and a bunch of uh, you know individual high net worths and more into this family office group. So. More than 20 years later, we've had 400 events, 200 dinner parties, 50,000 attendees, 6,000 people at dinner, uh, 5,000 of them have been family offices at dinner. So, so uh, we do events on a monthly basis, and uh, we typically average around 300 to 400 people per event. Uh, we had people like Tim Draper. We had about 500 people uh, back in April. We'll have, we had about 350 and counting sign up for this event. We'll probably get 15 more signups today uh, during the event. We'll have to let them in on Zoom. Uh, so um, I want to turn it over to Pete Thurlow from Polsonelli, um, and uh, he'll talk about what he does uh, and about Polsonelli's uh, worldview. So. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Peter Thurlow, I'm an IP partner in uh, Polsonelli New York office. This is the, I think it's the fifth event. It's uh, many. Four, fifth uh, event uh, that we've hosted from already. We've become uh, good friends and and I uh, really enjoy these meetings because uh, you get a, a broad perspective of business and the global economy. My expertise is uh, IP and patents. But when I joined Postinelli uh, seven years ago, you know, we have a thousand attorneys and now 23 offices. We just opened up an office in, in Utah, a uh, very nice area. Um, but uh, what I try to do is handle the intellectual property. But because of the family office work, the investment work, we get involved in a lot of deals. We'll set up the C Corp in Delaware, the operating agreements will handle all the, the venture capital work and then anything legal uh, required from this investment group. We've gotten, uh, uh, we had to set up a number of funds and we have an SEC group uh, used mainly out of St. Louis, about 15 people that we do that. So uh, I looked at the agenda. We have an exciting day today um, and tomorrow. Uh, for example, I was in the military, so I work as an advisor for DARPA. So DARPA has been up to these meetings uh, several times starting in September of last year and also in February of this year. Marty has been always gracious to welcome them to the team. They're speaking from four, four to five o'clock today. I had uh, three days of meetings at DARPA last week. They have a $3 billion fund and they invest across the board and you hear more about that later on. Uh, and then uh, as I work on capital, just to throw it out there, there's uh, finding out always uh, new areas of capital. There's a program in Texas called CPRIT. It's a $6 billion fund that invests and the number of clients to. Uh, and then we work with strategic investors and others. The last thing, I have friends and, and clients uh, coming in from, of course, uh, New York City, uh, upstate New York, Buffalo, from around the country, D.C., but uh, I want to introduce uh, from, sorry, I'm not going to put her on a sponsor, Tara. She's all the way in from Thailand. So I think that may hold the record of a uh, person from the, the furthest away here to come to, to Marty's meeting. When I told her a few weeks ago about the meeting, she wanted to attend. So we welcome her. And we're also working, uh, because Tara went to the Thai embassy in, in Washington, D.C. the other night. We had a really nice dinner with the ambassador. And then we're working with their uh, investment group in New York. Uh, from the Thai investment group. So we hope to, Thailand after the United States is my new favorite country. So, so uh, welcome. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. So thank you very much again to Marty. does a great job and appreciate all these gentlemen. Fantastic, great. So just to get back into this. So, so um, 
you know, our core focus really has always been on, on, on having a very, uh, you know, balanced uh, equilibrium with our presenters. Uh, we've always focused more on having the people who are developing the product rather than the product salespeople. It works better for us because we get to understand things on a deeper level. Uh, and the other thing also is that we, we tend, so, so what we found out is that by the time something gets into the media, an investor is six to 12 months late in looking at it. Right. It's it, by, by, by the time it's been productized and cleaned up, et cetera, et cetera, you're, you're late to the ball game. So what you wanted to always do is find things early. So we kind of got in crypto in like 2013, 2014. Uh, we were very good with peer to peer lending back just following the uh, collapse in 2008. Um, so, you know, you see all these headlines about how, you know, things are moving back into, uh, you know, private credit or distressed credit or distressed assets. Right. But, but I mean, that happened probably 12 months ago, right? So because it, it, it's in the media now, that means that it's it, it's late and it's old. So we try to always beat the media on on what things are going on. And, and we find that it really helps, you know. And then when we can, we try to get the experts. And we've got some fantastic experts here. I've got Harold Boardman who's going to be opening up the day talking about uh, the great, what I call the great real estate repricing, which is going on. Uh, so I know that there's a lot of stuff going on in New York with real estate collapsing, but I mean, if, if we were just in San Francisco last week and, and you're not going to be able to sit there because you're going to block the camera. Oh, so you've got to move to the side. <laughs> um, so we're talking about the uh, great repricing in San Francisco where, it, you know, there's this mall that's been abandoned and, it, and it's been, you know, one of the centerpieces of San Francisco for years. Uh, and, and it's very difficult to just find people working in San Francisco right now. You know, uh, it's probably like 30, 40 percent occupancy. People are, are at max three days work in office. Uh, so it's very intriguing. Um, you know, one thing I was talking to Harold about is that, you know, one of the leading uh, real estate law firms here in the city is changing offices. They used to have a, a massive office space, beautiful, and they're, and they're changing something, you know, less. And that's because of the three day, you know, work that's going on. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, Gerald Montgomery is going to be speaking. Gerald's got a great presentation. He's a professor at some university in New Jersey, and he has got a great presentation on. Uh, you know, coming global bifurcation. There's really some fantastic maps he's going to show you about, you know, China and China trade, whereas maybe 10 years ago, China was a leading trade, uh, you know, uh, country with 60% uh, of the world. Now it's a leading trade country with about 95% of the world. And then when you look at the Belt and Road Initiative, you'll see, or the BRICS Initiative, whatever you want to, BRICS plots, whatever you want to call it, the number of applicants, including from the Western Hemisphere, like what you call, I guess they're calling it the Global South right now, is, is, Dramatic, right? Mexico's applied to be in the BRICS, right? So uh, not a good sign. Uh, we also have uh, John Molina speaking. John is the, uh, I'm going to say he's the leading ESG, and not, not ESG necessarily, but zero carbon investor uh, in Southern California. He's put in uh, a couple hundred million dollars into uh, investing it. His family as uh, a group of entrepreneurs. He and his father started Molina Healthcare Systems, which is, uh, is about $35 billion a year in revenue. And it's worth somewhere around 14 to 15 billion dollars. Uh, so he's a big believer in zero carbon. I think a lot of people are. Uh, uh, John Cataldi is uh, leads the venture capital arm of of the uh, Seminole Indians. Uh, Seminole Indians are like the smartest Indian nation out there because they bought Hard Rock Cafe for nothing, <laughs> and now they own casinos and hotels all around the world, which are some of them are pretty fantastic. I highly recommend the Hard Rock Cafe in Panama. Uh, Panama City, Panama, because it has one of the best New Year's celebrations in the world. Um, so Daryl, uh, and I'll have Nick Marcolo. So Nick Marcolo was a CIO of a family office for many years, and uh, he's now managing other people's money under his own uh, name. Uh, but at the same time, um, uh, uh, he also works in the venture capital space. Uh, you know, he has a, a, a very different uh, view of venture capital and what's happening with that than your typical venture capitalists in San Francisco, uh, because he, he believes that what happened with Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic and Signature Bank is really a, 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 a dramatic uh, uh, move in banking for VC, and it's going to really change the landscape, uh, and Nick's going to talk about that tomorrow. Uh, 